Last year, uh, a Republican Virginia congressman who was running for a second term, a guy named Scott Taylor, uh, got himself into a little bit of trouble related to election fraud. One of his staffers was indicted on federal election fraud charges. The scheme was about forging signatures to try to get a third party candidate on the ballot. I mean, he was a Republican incumbent. Why does he want a third party candidate on the ballot? I think it was an act of desperation. I think the thinking was if there was a liberal third party candidate on the ballot, that might split off liberal voters and have a spoiler effect on the chances of the Democrat who was running against him in the general election. And so at least one of Scott Taylor's campaign staffers is maybe going to prison because of that fraud scheme which is lurid and crazy and also reflects how much of a long shot they were willing to take to try to get him reelected, right? This convoluted fraud scheme to get a third party candidate into the race to split the Democratic vote. It's, it seems like uh, it really wouldn't be worth it. But you can see why Scott Taylor might have been nervous. The second district in Virginia uh, is a district that in many ways is dominated by the presence of the U.S. Navy. It includes Virginia Beach and the naval base at Norfolk. Scott Taylor is a Navy veteran himself, but Look who he was running against. I was one of the first women to serve my entire Navy career on combatant ships, deployed six times. I'm Elaine Luria, and when this is your office, your only option is to work together. Congress could learn a thing or two at sea. Partisan politics can't protect Social Security and Medicare or fix our broken health care system. I approve this message because it'll take leaders from way outside Washington to bring a sea change to Congress. Sea change, right? You and I can't make that claim, but she earned it. Elaine Loria graduated at the Naval Academy with a physics degree. She became literally an engineer running nuclear reactors in charge of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, eventually commanded an assault craft force of 400 sailors. She's this incredibly accomplished military veteran. Ultimately, Democrat Elaine Luria goes on and she beats Scott Taylor in the general. I mean, he had reason to be worried, it turns out. And now that she's a member of Congress, she has the distinction of having served longer on active military duty than anybody else in the House Democratic Caucus. It was a big deal when Democrats took back the House. There's a lot of interesting people in the Democratic freshman class that just took over. Elaine Luria stands out for a lot of reasons, but she represents a district that went not just for Trump, it went for Romney before that, went for McCain before that. She's not one of the lefty leaders of the progressive caucus from this new crop of Democrats, but she's obviously got national security chops like literally nobody else in Congress right now. And that's why in the midst of this current national security crisis that has arisen around the president basically admitting that he pressed a foreign leader to dig up dirt on his political opponents while withholding military aid to that leader in the meantime, uh, it is making people sit up and take notice tonight that Elaine Luria has now joined six of her fellow freshman Democrats to call those actions, quote, an impeachable offense. Congresswoman Luria and her colleagues write tonight in the Washington Post, quote, we call on our colleagues in Congress to consider the use of all congressional authorities available to us, including the power of inherent contempt and impeachment hearings to address these new allegations, find the truth, and protect our national security. Joining us now is Congresswoman Elaine Luria. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. Yes. Well, thank you, Rachel. It's weird to talk about you right next to you, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that uh, social awkwardness. Um, this is a serious step, though, this um, op-ed that you've written with your colleagues tonight. Can you tell me about your thinking process leading up to this? Well, my thinking process is, if, if this particular instance that's happened uh, with the President of the United States, enlisting a foreign leader to assist him in conducting an investigation that will smear and damage his potential political opponent in the upcoming election, um, and in the process of doing that, potentially withheld foreign aid to that country. Um, if this isn't impeachable, what is? Hmm. So I feel like this is a clear and concise instance that the American people can understand where the President of the United States has tried to enlist foreign influence in our election process and also threatened our national security by withholding foreign aid. And you know, this is a game changer. Threatening national security. Can you expand on that some? I mean, uh, obviously, whenever you're talking about relations uh, with a foreign country, whenever you're talking about military aid, whenever you're talking about potential private interests 
uh, trumping the public interest in terms of our international mm -hmm. relations, it's easy to invoke national security. But given your background, how do you specifically think this is dangerous to us as mm -hmm. a country? Well, in your earlier segment, you spent a lot of time talking about you know, the background related to the Ukraine and their position with the 2014 invasion of Russia into Crimea. And you know, Congress has appropriated funds, $250 million specifically, to the security assistance of the Ukraine. And the fact that that money was withheld and to me, whether it was explicitly stated or not, I believe that the president um, and leadership within the Ukraine uh, would understand, in the case of these demands, the fact that this money being withheld was meant to coerce their actions towards conducting this investigation. And this case is different because in this case, the president and his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, have stated, yes, we said this during the conversation. We mm -hmm. ask a foreign leader to investigate a political candidate in the United States. And their intent could have been nothing other than to try to, to smear him, to find um, dirt and malign him in order to um, influence the outcome of, of the next election. Oh, in uh, the Russia investigation, in the course of the Mueller investigation and the Mueller report, and all of the revelations about the president's behavior and indeed uh, his inviting Russian interference in the election to the extent that that's been, that was proven by Mueller's investigation. Through all of that, you didn't call for impeachment proceedings, even as many of your colleagues did. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you, I hear I hear you when you say this is a clear and concise and direct mm -hmm. problem in terms of what the president has done here. Um, do you worry about the political consequences of you endorsing impeachment proceedings over this? I mean, you are from a, a narrowly Republican-leaning mm -hmm. district. Yes. Well, you know, as you mentioned in the intro, I spent 20 years in the Navy. I spent my entire career in a position that was nonpartisan. If you think about the fact that, you know, operating nuclear reactors on an aircraft carrier and we're simultaneously conducting strikes into Iraq and Afghanistan, and I'm supervising the operation of eight nuclear reactors, I didn't turn to the reactor operator next to me and say, are you a Democrat, are you a Republican? We had a mission to accomplish. And I think that that idea of you know, this is not a partisan issue. I think it is an issue of doing the thing that is right. And I understand for myself this this could very well be a political liability, but I came to Congress to do what was right. The people in my district sent me to Washington to make hard choices. And I think that they did that in part because I've been making hard choices my entire career in the Navy. I commanded a combat unit of 400 sailors. I served as the executive officer on a guided missile cruiser. I did six deployments on ships in dangerous circumstances and operating nuclear reactors and weapons systems. There were a lot of hard choices that had to be made during my career. And I think that very background is why uh, the voters in my district sent me to Washington. And so I think that I've made a choice that is clear. And I'm doing this because I think it is right. Um, and there really doesn't need to be a political calculus in this situation. There is not for me. Looking at this from the outside, it does feel like things are different to see your name on this op-ed. The names of the other people who signed on to this with you, Mikey Sherrill, Abigail Spanberger, Alyssa Slotkin, Gil Cisneros, Jason Crow, Chrissy Houlihan, um, to see people who are who have not not only not been banging the drum for for impeachment, but who have been um, reticent on this issue and really not willing uh, to be out ahead of other people on this and taking a sort of moderate line on all of these things. It feels different. It does feel like something's broken uh, and that the Democrats are going to move forward in a different way. Does it feel that way to you, too? It definitely feels that way. And I made this decision on my own. Yeah. Um, but I very quickly consulted with my colleagues who I found were all on the same page. And you can see that seven of us came together with a national security background and, and shared our thoughts with the public as to why we've made the decision that we've made. And I truly can't speak for every colleague within the House, and, um, but, but I just definitely feel that, that the tide is changing. And, and you truly, for those of us you know, who've signed on to this op-ed, we, we took this oath many times in different capacities, either in the military, serving in intelligence, the CIA. Um, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I took that oath the first time when I was 17 years old and went to the Naval Academy and took it again upon every promotion during my 20-year Navy career and most recently now serving in Congress representing my district. So I take it very seriously. And I think all of us come at it from that, that perspective, that you know, we are sent there to uphold the Constitution and that this is clear and concise evidence to the American public that wrongdoing has happened and that we need to take the next step to follow through, get to the bottom of that um, information, and let the American public know all the facts. Elaine Loria, representative from Virginia, thank you so much for coming yes. in and talking to me about this. It's thank really good so to have much. you here. Thank it's you. Great to be here. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.